Thank you, Madam Chair. Good to be on the committee. Um, I want to thank the witnesses. Uh, I'm going to follow up on Senator Duckworth's line of questioning for uh, uh, Mr. Cisneros, Ms. Scully, and Mr. Constable. I, and, and if this has already been talked about, I, I apologize for getting in here late. But um, we have this recruiting problem right now. And um, I don't have to tell you, but the Army's 2022 recruiting goal was missed by 25 percent. Um, so far this year, the Army, Navy, and Air Force are projected to miss their 2023 targets. And I'm really interested in what you think is going on. Um, there's different theories. There's economy. There's, you know, I think there's cultural issues, right? If you tell everybody every day in the Washington Post and the New York Times that the military is full of extremists, which, oh, by the way, it isn't, okay? It isn't. Let's just get that one right. Um, you're going to have people go, well, geez, I don't want to send my young son and daughter there, right? Um, so the Army deserves some credit developing its soldier prep course, which I think has been successful. The Navy seems to be taking a different approach, which is dropping its standards to as low as they can go. Not really wise, in my view. Uh, the Marine Corps hasn't missed its recruiting goals, but I don't think they're out of the woods yet. So what do you think is happening, and how do we need to get on it? And I do think that the average man and woman, young man and woman in America, who wants to serve, they want to deploy, they want to defend their country, they want to fight, right? So I think we can't lose that aspect of trying to recruit for the men and women who want to do it. We don't have to go too far afield to say, oh, we're going to do all these other appeals. We should appeal to the patriotism and desire that's been in this country for 200 plus years to deploy and fight for their country. I think that's how you get good recruiting numbers. But what do you guys think? Senator, uh, thanks for the question and again for the opportunity to kind of talk about recruiting. We know the, there are some challenges out there right now. Um, and one of the things that we are seeing in the research that we have is that there is definitely a military-civilian divide. Um, you know, as Senator Duckworth said, right, the, the recruiting pool is getting less and less, smaller and smaller of those who are qualified. So and they're not qualified because they're overweight, they have, they have a low ASVAP score. Mm -hmm. what, what is it? That, well, those are two things right there, sir, right there. It's the, the, they're not meeting the academic standards. They're not meeting the physical fitness standards. Okay. Uh, but then uh, we're also seeing that, um, you know, 30 years ago, 40% of people between the ages of 16 to 24 knew somebody who had served in the military. Uh, that's only 15% right now. They don't know what the military is. They don't understand what it's about. Um, and that was why uh, earlier we talked about, you know, we have got to do a better job of going out and telling our story yeah. and the benefits of military service. Great story. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it changed my life. It, it put me on a different trajectory. I know it's done that um, for, for thousands of people. So are you viewing the soldier prep course as an answer that other services can maybe emulate? I think the, uh, well, the Army would, uh, could probably better talk about that uh, later on, but that is one of the things that they saw. They saw there was a need to help students academically, to help them get in better shape. Uh, in order so they can meet those standards. I understand, from what I understand, is the Navy is, is talking about um, uh, emulating that program as well. Good. So, Good. Any other thoughts, uh, Mr. Constable, Ms. Skelly? Senator, I want to point out one specific uh, initiative we've had, and that is the medical assessments review uh, pilot. And this is where we're questioning conventions that have constrained us over the years, just simply because we know more than we used to, especially with electronic health records. And that is where we used to say, if you have had asthma at any point, you yeah. are not eligible. Yeah. So we, we questioned all of those working closely, of course, with the medical team to define where we can assume uh, a little less looking at the data to where these people would qualify. And that's Good. brought thousands more in. Good. What about, this is a topic I've been, on that topic, on mental health, right? Right now, I know for a fact that certain services, and I've been asking this question through the Armed Services Committee, but we disqualify young men and women, some services, if they've seen a psychiatrist or if they've been on medicine for mental health. 
and yet we want them to try to improve their mental health, right? How are we thinking about that in a way that would not just say, oh, you were on medicine for six months, you saw a psychiatrist, young high school kid, you're disqualified. Because then, that's just the wrong message. They're either gonna lie or they're gonna not seek help. There's, a, as Mr. Constable said, there are a lot of things um, that we have looked to, to reevaluate that we're, we're trying to work with the services to expand that. Is um, that one? Uh, I, I believe it is one. Um, you know, one of the things is that we are trying to do within the military is destigmatize mental health. As the Good. secretary says all the time, mental health is health. Yeah. Uh, we want people to come forward when they need, to feel the need, they need to talk to somebody or they need to see a professional. Um, you know, we don't want them to, you know, it used to almost be if you said you had a problem, they would just automatically take your security clearance away or ground you from flying the aircraft. Um, uh, we don't want that to be the case anymore. We've been working hard to change that. Uh, and to make it, you know, so that people will come forward and, and deal with their health issues.